Hello, this is Brian Klein with Thunderhead Engineering. We are often asked what's the best approach for modeling long tunnels uh, in FDS and through Pyrosim. Um, this is an approach here that you see on the screen where uh, we have geometry for the tunnel uh, that goes and, and uh, changes uh, in the Z direction along the X axis here from a higher starting point to a uh, lower ending points. We'll just kind of look at this. It drops down. And what people frequently do um, in situations like this is make meshes around the tunnel section um, uh, that try to, you know, encapsulate the tunnel as it moves along its path. Um, and this is a fine approach, um, but there may be some ways that we can, by altering the approach, save quite a bit of uh, computation time and potentially increase resolution um, by flattening the tunnel in the z-axis. So uh, you can imagine though that uh, you know um, relative to the tunnel path or the floor of the tunnel uh, gravity is at an angle to the normal surface of this tunnel floor. Um, so we need to take into account gravity and that's what I'd like to talk about in this particular video is how to flatten a tunnel and take into account gravity so that you can have maybe one long mesh that covers the tunnel from end to end instead of requiring multiple meshes. Um, and in this, just as an example, we have about 960,000 cells in the model with cell sizes around one half meter, one half meter by one half meter. Uh, we'll see at the end the difference in the single mesh version where the tunnel has been flattened. You can look in the FDS user's guide and there's a special topic in section 6.4.3 about defying gravity and here it explains how you can change the gravitational vector uh, using ramps in the X, Y, and Z direction to um, alter the vector along the x-axis. Okay, in, in, in FDS um, it's along this x-axis distance that you can change the x, y, and z vectors. Um, you can't do this in the, in the uh, z or y direction. Uh, so first you would just want to read that and it explains here with an example how this was done. You know, I, I basically took dimensions from or, um, or points along the tunnel path, okay, and I got the x value and the z value, the height of the tunnel, along the path from end to end. Um, and I put those uh, into a spreadsheet. So uh, I put these into a spreadsheet, and what I have here is the x values and the z values along the path um, and, and plug those in. Then I calculate the uh, essentially the angle of the slope here and then from that I'm able to come up with the x and z gravitational factors that I'll be putting into the table and then I use a sum of squares check just to make sure that my factors come out to 9.81, which is what they need to sum. So uh, this is the calculation. Now um, let's switch over to this Pyrosim model. So in this model I have one mesh. This is the length of the tunnel. Um, the y and the z dimensions are the same um, as you would need for the cross section of, to surround the cross section of this tunnel. Um, different dimension. So, so we have that. We can see this very long rectangle. And then um, if you go under the FDS menu, simulation parameters, environment, you can specify gravity. And here you can say it's either constant or from a table. Uh, so we do from table and then we edit values. So here we see our x. Uh, you're going to want to change this function input to x position. And then along the x, along these values, in the x direction here for the x vector, these are the gravity uh, factors here, the gravity in meters per second squared. Okay, so uh, we do the same thing in the, for the z direction from table, we edit the values, we plug in the same x positions and the 
associated vectors for uh, gravity in that direction. Okay, and once we have that, PyroSim will automatically um, build the code for us for FDS, and now we have that in here. To trace, it's it's difficult to see gravity, so to trace it, I initialize the entire um, mesh with a particle cloud of just water droplets, and then I can trace those over time. So when I run FDS, um, I get a result here, and I've gone in here and I've changed the view options. Uh, let's get in dialogs here. Um, I went in motion view, window properties, to size preserving so that I wouldn't get the perspective shift on the domain, and so I save that. And then I can load uh, my particle files. Okay, so I see water dropping, but it's a little bit difficult in this just to see what's happening because um, it's quick. So uh, what I want to do is, um, let's maximize this. We can see time here going. So um, I have a relatively short lifespan and stuff on these particles, but it'll be enough for me to, to see what I need. So what I want to see is at the ends of the tunnel where it's flat, the droplet should fall vertically, and in the midsection of the tunnel where it was sloped, we should see droplets falling at an angle at, at approximately this this angle to uh, to this box, so that it will account for the gravity vector there. So let me can hit the control key and zoom in here, and we'll start at an end, and we can see droplets are falling pretty much vertically which is what we expect here, because in our spreadsheet, at the end of the tunnel, it's essentially 9.81 straight down for the last bit from this dist from this point to this point in the X. It's not, not changing its elevation. Um, as I move down the tunnel, we'll start to see more dramatically as we get farther in, um, the angle of the droplets is changing. So they're starting to fall at the angle that they should. If if this floor was sloped up, these would be falling straight down with gravity, but since this is now flat, the gravity is pulling it at approximately this angle here. Uh, that sort of validates our, our expectation. If we were using our original model, we would see droplets falling at a particular angle from normal from essentially up here down. Let's go in the 2D view. Yeah, so what we would see in this section is if a droplet fell from here, it would come straight down to here. But if we rotate this to the angle, we would it would look like it was falling at an angle like this. This is what we expect. Now we could take the this geometry. Um, we could take the cross section, you know, of the tunnel that we want, and then you know make geometry that just extrudes straight through from one end to the other and fills our new mesh from one end to the other of this. And then we would get the bounding geometry or the opening of the tunnel correct. You can put your train cars in there, everything, whatever you have going into your tunnel um, with your gravity working on plumes, on the buoyant plumes correctly along the length of the tunnel. So now let's take a look at our new mesh configuration and we'll see now from 960,000, we've now we're now reduced down to 383,000, um, while still maintaining the same uh, one half meter on a side cube for our cell sizes. Uh, this is a pretty significant reduction in the number of cells required for this simulation. So this is a quick example of how to use gravity vectors uh, changing over the x direction over the x axis um, to simulate tunnels with um, angled shapes, angled paths uh, through the ground. If you have any questions, uh, please email us at support at thunderheadeng.com. Thank you.